All right. Um, hello and uh, welcome to this uh, small event where I play uh, Legend of Grimrock and uh, talk a bit about my thoughts about uh, puzzle design. But I want to introduce myself a little bit before we start to play. Uh, so uh, I, I guess quite many of you have uh, already seen me somewhere. Um, for example, I have been working as, as a um, regional artist of games for, for the past five years, uh, but currently I'm wor working kind of uh, substituting the game design teacher at Aalto University for, for half a year. But I have about 20 years plus uh, experience on, on uh, games industry and especially on game design. So uh, this is uh, puzzle design is something that I, I've been really interested in, in for a long time. And uh, I think uh, Legend of Grimrock series uh, is probably the best best example of, of uh, certain kinds of uh, puzzles and puzzle design. So I decided to use that game, yeah, the first Legend of Grimrock, uh, as a kind of platform to present my thoughts about uh, puzzle design. And uh, let's see if if I can start streaming this. Go live. I guess you should see the video right now. So if there is any problems, shout out loud. Uh, I can't hear any shouting, so I'll start playing the game. Uh, basically. This is the first screen where uh, you start the game. Uh, you, this is the very beginning of the game, and uh, you may know already from from the like basic principles of of game design that uh, players are quite often led to uh, right direction with lights and and uh, other things. So when you start the game, you can see this, and of course there's a light and uh, it calls you and you want to go towards the light. And here we are already at the first ki kind of puzzle. This is not like really a uh, difficult one. But I, I want to show you this that uh, or tell you about this idea of uh, puzzles being combinations of kind of lock something that blocks you from advancing in the game. Then you have the key, kind of something that you can use to open the lock so you can continue playing. And then there's the action of using the uh, key uh, to the lock. And this doesn't mean that these are kind of um, physical things in the game, but they can be uh, some kind of uh, maybe items, but also something that you have to do in certain order or you have to uh, do in in precise timing or, or something like that. And for example, here we can see the first door. You can't get past that, but uh, as you already can see on the right side, there's some text. And if I click that text, it says, choose, you, choose your faith, perish in this cell or pick up the torch. Well, uh, I don't want to use all my uh, gaming time in this this uh, cell, this kind of prison. Uh, so maybe I'll take the torch. Okay. This is kind of stupid uh, prison. It already tells me how to get out of that. So that gives me kind of a uh, kind of puzzling feeling about everything in this game. Uh, it, it feels like this is make, made for me or made for not to keep people inside, but uh, kind of give them uh, some challenges or teach them something. So this overall feeling is already kind of implicit thematic puzzling uh, kind of story or, or feeling. Uh, and uh, well, from now on, the game is quite a lot about uh, going through the puzzles and and uh, fighting some enemies. But let's continue the game. Well, yeah, a lot of uh, tunnels here. 
yes, another door. I, this is quite obvious also. There's a lock, uh, the door, then there is a handle which you can pull. So that the handle was the key. And now when I pulled it, that was the action of uh, opening the lock. Uh, well, that's basic principle is, is quite clear. Yet another one. Okay, it's, it teaches me now that there are levers. I can use the lever since it's a lever. If I turn it another one way, uh, the door closes. This can be used somewhere. All right, let's continue. And uh, let's say I have played this game for about 200 hours. Uh, so uh, I'll skip most of the easy parts or, or quite obvious parts in, in this game. And if you want to uh, play it yourself, feel free to uh, explore more. But yet another puzzle teaching us uh, this mechanism. OK, I, I step on the plate. It opens the door, but if I step uh, off the plate, it closes the door. Luckily, I, I found a rock here. So the rock is definitely a key for this lock. And now I put it there. It presses the uh, plate and I can continue. And uh, yeah, now we get to another uh, thing. Before, uh, in each of the earlier puzzles, we already saw the lock before we found the key. Uh, but now we found the key uh, before we know where it's going or where we can use it. And this kind of changes the uh, puzzles in a way that uh, it turns to certain kind of uh, search mission. I, I Now I know I have a key. There's, there's a lock somewhere. I just want to find it where it could be. Oh, there's a lock. All right. Of course, let's use this here. Very easy. And I saw this rock here beforehand. So now I have a, another rock. Yes, there's some text. OK. This text says loose rock. It's definitely kind of uh, instruction for, for me. Maybe it's a it, it might be already part of the like uh, solution for some puzzle. And now I, I see, as you can see, there's a difference here. Uh, this small rock here is, uh, it looks different than any other rock in this uh, wall. Well, that definitely has to be a button. So I press the button. Uh, but this also kind of tunes my thinking towards uh, that uh, the walls can actually hide some buttons and they can uh, hide some something else also. So of course now I uh, since I want to like solve all the puzzles in the game, I, I start go looking at all the walls. Uh, and yeah, now I found another key. Yeah, for if if I can find more buttons, and uh, when I play these games quite often, I move like this. I, I kind of brute force my uh, way through the games. I try to find all possible buttons and and uh, secrets in the game, and uh, I think uh, using <clears throat> brute force as as the meaning of solving puzzles. Uh, it, it's not very good uh, puzzle design. Uh, in my mind, puzzles are something that, that they have a certain kind of logic. And, and uh, uh, you, you want to understand the logic to open the lock. So you want to have the key in your mind so you can open the lock. But if the puzzles are in a way that uh, you just try to like do all different kinds of things in the game uh, so you can advance. It doesn't feel like you are actually like solving any puzzles. You are just doing everything, trying trying all kinds of stuff, uh, trying to like get get forward in the game. But now, since I, I got this idea in my head that there can be bu uh, buttons in, in the game, I already came back to this uh, 
starting point. I kind of backtracked my way in this game. And I've heard that backtracking is like not very, very good thing in uh, modern game design. People nowadays are quite used to uh, solve a puzzle, get forward, uh, solve a puzzle, get forward, and not going back anymore. They want to see new places. They want to like uh, games to hold their hand in a way that um, you just go and uh, forward and and don't have to like return where you are already has been. But I came here back into like a starting cell and I found another button. Uh, since I already left this place, this kind of uh, turned into negative space in the game that I have already been here. Uh, it hasn't any meaning anymore. It's behind me. Uh, but in this game and in quite a, uh, many other games like this, uh, you quite often return where you get, came from and, and uh, continue uh, trying to find new new puzzles and new ways to uh, advance your story and adventure. Okay, yeah, we found a key there, yet another lock. One one more thing I want to say about those buttons uh, that are hidden in the walls. Those kinds of puzzles they they rely on your sensory. A kind of input, your vision, maybe your hearing sometimes. Uh, you may hear that something is opening or closing somewhere. So they are not that much of of uh, logic puzzles, but they are uh, relying on your on your senses and ability to see things and and hear things. While uh, some other puzzles may be build in a way that um, you really have to think about like uh, what is the key in the puzzle and, and how you should use the key uh, to advance the game. Uh, okay, quite a lot of fighting here. Well, we got through to like very first ideas and thoughts about puzzle design. Uh, having this like lock key and action, uh, we get like a bit deeper in those ideas uh, further in the game. And also, uh, I talked a bit about like this um, negative space, going going uh, back to your uh, on your tracks, uh, trying to like brute forcing things in in games and so on. So it would be so lovely to play uh, this game a bit longer from here maybe we can uh, solve this another puzzle here's like you definitely see that okay there's a like hatch in the, in the floor and uh, we can't get over it and there's something like glimmering in the uh, in the uh, end well to close the pit something need, needs to fly well, this is also quite obvious. There's a plate over there. If I throw a rock, yeah, that kind of solves the puzzle. Now I get the key and I can use the key somewhere else. Uh, this is also an example of kind of nested or faced puzzle. I already uh, had to solve one puzzle to get the key to another one. And well, I don't even know where the key fits. Now I have to kill that poor snail. Sorry for the excess violence here, but this is how the games work. Oh yeah, definitely it goes here. And yet, yet another puzzle. So this game constantly uh, keeps feeding you new and new puzzles. This says heal my sight. Yeah, this kind of statue has empty holes and uh, in the place of its eyes. So, def so it's quite clear that I have to find something to like heal, heal the vision, put something in the eyes. And so the uh, game continues from here. 
but since we only have like one hour i want to load another part uh, of the game let's go to level five i already got some new stuff for my my characters i have swords and everything and and uh so on but this is like from the very beginning of level five of this game and uh this this uh hall is the like starting point of this this level and if i i look at the map uh here it also says the name of the level is hallways uh, it doesn't make really like it doesn't mean much right now, but uh, it's nice to know those names. It may they may give you some hints at some point. Okay, I don't want to open the doors here because uh, there may be some some enemies coming uh, through the doors, and and it can be dangerous for me if all the enemies just like attack me. So I I want to uh, search for my surroundings. At first, so I understand where I am and uh, what are my uh, my options here. Yep. Can I interrupt yes. you for a second? Uh, somebody yes. wrote a question in the chat. Uh, I'm super interested in the term nested puzzles. I'm wondering if Jako can elaborate a bit on what a nested puzzle is. Yeah, that's a good question. Let's go here. So. Uh, I just introduce you or, or talk a bit about this space where I am in this game right now. So I came from here and of course I, I check these surroundings. Here's a lever, it uh, quite probably opens this door. Here's a dead end, no worries. Uh, here's a door that I can, can't open right now. Uh, at least I feel like I can't. There's a lever, it probably opens this door. and. Uh, Here's a lock. So this lock kind of gives me uh, an idea that I need to find the key to this lock. And also you can see the blue light over there that uh, tells me that there's a save point or like healing crystal that I can use to uh, uh, heal all my characters and go there. So that is kind of my goal in this space. And to uh, get there, I think I need a key. And since I can't find a key here, I need to go to some other places. And I, I start uh, exploring the uh, room by opening this door. I get to another room. It's empty. Well, this is probably some kind of uh, cell or, or, I don't know, prison cell. But as you can see, uh, we already learned that the, there are buttons in the walls there's another button here. So this is kind of serial, uh, serialized puzzles. You open one door, you get to another place, place, you press the button. Oh yeah, the secret door opens. You get to other space. Ah, and here is the puzzle uh, key, which probably opens the door, which uh, we already saw. So this is kind of a nested puzzle that we knew that we have to go to the uh, locked door we don't have the key so we start looking for the key and we solve puzzles to find the key and we kind of have this idea or, or goal uh, for finding the key uh, before continuing to uh, exploring the uh, surroundings okay and well, now I'm here and I, I can use this other lever to open this door and I get back to the hallway. And now I have the key. So we kind of uh, had this like longer term, term idea of uh, finding the key and then we used a shorter term uh, mechanics and goals and, and uh, puzzle solving to get the key. And now when we get the key, we kind of get back to the place where we can use the key. Uh, and here we are. I would say this was kind of like two-step nested puzzle. It's like basically you just uh, have to find one key uh, in a way to get there. Uh, and you have to 
solve a couple of, of puzzles which were presented us in, in like uh, serialized order so you only know about one puzzle at the time and you solve the puzzles to uh, get forward i hope this like clarified uh, the nesting puzzle uh, idea a bit more okay once more we can't get uh, past like bit over here and uh, this is the only way to go go since we want to go to the crystal uh, we saw in in previous room uh, this is something that we want to like or we at least I think we want to go through this door because that that is the shortest way to the crystal so we once again we want to find a key uh, here's the dead end here's some stuff I destroy it because I'm I'm nasty destroyer of everything uh, okay here's also something that we haven't seen in the game before really beautiful uh, thing that differs from the surroundings I don't understand yet what it is but I'm pretty sure it has some kind of meaning so uh, I'll just make a marking in the in the uh, map where where this is so here's a statue so I remember if, if this is meaningful now I can remember it oh yeah some food also that's nice let's eat uh, I think some of my characters were a bit hungry already yet another almost trivial puzzle uh, I don't know if that's even a puzzle but now we got to a door here's a door here's like lever button another button uh since i don't know how this works what what should i do maybe i just try to do something yeah so if i try to like open this door right now it would be like um doing some brute force uh solving and it's really like not understanding the puzzle it's it's just like well trying to go through and it, it's not as satisfying as it uh, like actually solving the puzzles is so here's another space there are like nine bits on the floor two buttons over here so yeah let's try this okay so if i press that button it closes like six of those uh bits and if i press this it closes another six or how many maybe there were five and if i uh, press them again uh, it kind of reverses the thing now i want to learn how this works i, I press this so these are closed and now i press this so this is kind of uh what is like a xor a bitwise xor thing that's uh these buttons like open and close the uh, bits uh, in very logical way in a way that uh, I can understand how this thing works right now but I can't get to the like uh, you can see see in the end over there there's a, something maybe a key but I can see here another button and I go here and uh, it affects a uh, different set of uh, bits I could try to like make a strategy for this puzzle but since I've been like, solving this quite many times I just do this uh, in a way that okay now I got here and the setup of the floor is a bit different now I press here and and get uh, over here so I solved the puzzle but it also opened a door oh two doors and a few enemies sorry for fighting uh, also in, in Legend of Grimrock the fighting uh, has some puzzle elements because especially when you have a lot of enemies many many enemies the way you move in the space and uh, kind of 
control that you don't get stuck in the corner or, or the enemies don't surround you is, is quite important for, for uh, surviving. So it's kind of spatial uh, understanding of where you are, where you try to uh, be and, and uh, try to control the space and time in a way that uh, you don't get stuck. And here we found a, a piece of paper. And the piece of paper says that I preserved some of my extra herder caps, which is food, in the nearby room. I'm not quite sure what the exact sequence of event, uh, events was that opened the door, but I think I had to do three things. And I'm certain that at one point I pulled the lever repeatedly leaving it in an upright position. Now we know uh, that in a, in a previous room there was uh, this lever uh, and these buttons. And I have to do, do three things and leave the lever in upright position. And now I have some hints for the thing, but it still feels like I'm doing a lot of kind of brute forcing and this is like the the most hints I get for this puzzle and I just if I want to open the door I need to kind of <laughs> do this uh, rather oh now I don't know what I did oh damn yet another fight I don't know what I did to kind of exactly to solve the puzzle that's like bad thing with the uh, the with these uh, brute forcing things that you don't necessarily understand the uh, actual functioning of, of, of the puzzle before you accidentally more or less manage to like solve it so I would say Legend of Grimrock games, they have many really wonderful and excellent puzzles, but this is something that I, I really don't like. This was like a low point of, of these games. Yeah, I found a nice pointy hat. Let, let's put it here and throw this letter gap away. But now I also have the key. I can't remember where was the... Oh yeah, here was the a long, long time ago here was a door yet another fight oh two enemies okay uh, three enemies nice I'm also playing this on an easier level because I don't want to get stuck in these fights for too long Even more enemies, and now I got stuck in the corner, and now I'm dead. So, yeah, I, I failed this, this like implicit uh, fighting puzzle. Uh, I, I uh, wasn't paying enough attention to, like, uh, actually uh, keeping my uh, escape route clear. But maybe we can continue to yet another place. Uh, If I just find uh... okay, yes, my note was a uh, memory game, so yeah, chamber of beats. Let's go there. Uh, we already have seen puzzles that are based on your like uh, eyesight and maybe hearing and and uh, how you figure what to do by uh, paying attention to the surroundings. We already saw some logics. Uh, the, the logic puzzle of nine bits and how the buttons affect the uh, bits was certainly a kind of logical thing you have to solve uh, to get yet another key. Uh, 
but now this puzzle is a kind of different yeah there, here's a, a lever again and and here's a room with one two three four one two three four sixteen plus uh four like twenty if i i can can calculate correctly twenty bits and uh, uh i definitely want to go there in the corner what to do let's start with this nothing happens okay here's a button what happens ah so it seems that these like uh, buttons started a kind of mechanics that uh, forms a path through this uh, room unfortunately uh, the path started from from the ending uh, where I want to go so this is not really helping me but since I'm a very clever guy I try this uh, lever and press the button ah and now it goes to the other round now I'm I'm examining uh, the functionality of, of this uh, mechanism here and, and trying to kind of learn the path I want to uh, move uh, through this room to get get through this puzzle so this is kind of uh, testing my memory uh, and and uh, also kind of visual understanding of, of spaces uh, so and also yet another thing uh, uh, pits open and close pretty quickly so I have to move quickly so this is also a puzzle of of uh, precise and uh, well-timed movement so let's go here and damn I failed okay I don't want to fight I, I load the game funny thing with this game is is that uh, you don't die directly if, if you fall into pit you just fall into uh, like lower floor and you can continue exploring there but now oh there's a button in the wall damn I haven't noticed that before and I have practiced this a bit so I, I got here yes so that was a puzzle of like a kind of cognitive skills um, memory and also my uh, bodily skills uh, my ability to move uh, in right direction in in right time and I absolutely hate these like grapple like creatures definitely especially now when when it's standing in front of me and I can't get into like movement phase of of the battle and I just have to kill it here or just close the door and take some rest and I can't go back well let's sleep for a while so there are like different the, oh yes more about like thematic uh, and story uh, related puzzling information but uh, there are like different puzzles that uh, test different skills and different qualities of, of the player for example the sensory is the logic timing uh, my bodily uh, abilities like ability to move in uh, in speed or have force or whatever and also cognitive skills and when you are designing puzzles it's, it's uh, nice to like understand uh, what kind of skills are required uh, to solve the puzzle Oh, that was an easy one well here are also a lever and a button I guess if I, I do this and press this yeah then I can get back ah! well that was like really clever 
go away. I... Yes, thank you. I managed to like escape the uh, huge fight. I don't know where I am. I'll just. Ah, yes. I got back, back in the beginning. Uh, maybe one big thing I uh, think I, I also want to like say here. Uh, it, 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 it's related to difficulty and, and uh, challenges, types of types of challenges in games. And I call this like syntactic, semantic, pragmatic uh, kind of a modeling of, of difficulty or uh, challenges and also maybe thematic in the uh, in in a certain contexts but let's talk about this syntactic semantic pragmatic thing and this is maybe quite a good place to like talk about that syntactic uh, difficulty in my definition means that uh, the rules of, of this like challenge are how, how complex they are. For example, this puzzle over here, the rules are not so complex. Uh, I, I learned that, okay, using this lever uh, changes the uh, direction of the like, path and pressing this button uh, starts the mechanism. And then I have to like move, move through that uh, path. So the syntax for this uh, was about about that. It, it was not too complex. The semantic uh, side of this, it, it's maybe more uh, kind of clear when we are talking about this um, uh, emergent qualities of games. For example, if you if you play Go, you know, if you know the board game Go, for example. The syntax or the rules of the game, they are quite simple. But the semantic side, uh, the like things that uh, grow from the like simple rules, they can be extremely uh, like complicated and and uh, diverse and 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 whatever in, in the case of Go. So the kind of Go's uh, difficulty comes from the like semantic uh, kind of dynamic uh, events that the small rule set can can uh, produce you know this this uh, basic uh, game design things of uh, about about uh, well how, how those things work but here, yeah, the semantic side is like, okay, now I know how it works. Now I, I got to like do that. But on the pragmatic thing level, uh, it's the pragmatic difficulty is about like my personal qualities and, and abilities to perform. Like here, uh, the physical movement uh, and uh, kind of remembering the path, uh, being on time uh, and everything else, it, it depends on my abilities and qualities if if i'm slow mover uh, or my memory is bad i'm i'm failing this uh puzzle so uh, this gives me a pragmatic challenge also a good example of of pragmatic challenges is let's say wall climbing or climbing or bouldering i love to go to bouldering where you climb uh kind of low walls uh, without harnesses or anything and and uh, in that kind of wall climbing, uh, the thing is that there are kind of routes from from the floor level to the top, and you follow the routes uh, and uh, try to reach the top top of the wall. And uh, well, I I have some difficulties with my back nerves, so my feet don't work properly, and I can't use my force uh, in in a way that. Uh, people tend to do that. So I have this pragmatic challenge, extra challenge of, of uh, not being able to use my legs in, in, in full uh, power while climbing. 
so that gives me a kind of pragmatic extra challenge that I have to overcome if I want to like get uh, to uh, more difficult and difficult routes. The same also applies to like small kids who are not like tall enough. They can't reach certain like holes in the walls. And so they can't uh, climb the walls in a way maybe the like root master has decided or wanted to do. So uh, that that's an example of or of pragmatic challenge. And now I try to do this another time. And now I have pressed that. I don't know where it leads me. Oh, now I remember where it goes. I could go left from here. There, there was a, like something, but I don't want to go there. Okay, that's that's about that. Yet, okay. One more uh, game. Say, uh, uh, let's see if it was here. Oh yeah, we already did this, so need no need to go there. But here's another one. Uh, like basically, I, I have already like went through most of my notes here. So if you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to ask now. I, I'm still uh, playing through this puzzle uh, and uh, talking a lot about the design and and uh, stuff. Yeah, I could actually ask one one question myself. Okay. Uh, not related to any specific part of the game, but uh, you mentioned earlier that like in, in modern game design, it's not considered good practice to make people backtrack. Would you say that's true for all target groups or are there still like no. players who actually do like backtracking like in the old Definitely. games, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say that uh, Maybe saying that uh, in in modern design it's it's not a good practice. Let's say in modern design, uh, like backtracking is avoided for a certain reason. Uh, maybe because I don't know, we wanted to make the games as as kind of uh, experiences where the player can feel kind of, kind of omnipotent or feel able to do stuff. So uh, we help them quite a lot, and, and that also means that uh, you don't want to go backwards uh, in the game. So you have this constant uh, feeling of advancing in the game and, and uh, going forward and, and getting rewards of, of like, yeah, advancing in the game. But of course, uh, at the same time, there are a lot of people who like want to do different things in the games for example people who want to play games like this or people who want to like make sure that they didn't miss anything kind of explorers of, of the surroundings so people go around get back where they were uh, try to like go to the like side routes or wherever and uh so on so yeah that that was kind of notion about like how we tend to make games oh. nowadays. I'm not saying it's not really good, but that ha that happens quite a lot. Yes. Yeah. There's actually two more questions in the chat now. Yeah. Uh, somebody said uh, there briefly was a mention of a potential thematic challenge. Would you give your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, thing that I, I just decided to add into my model. Uh, a bit later, uh, when I started making this model or thinking about like uh, the, uh, the uh, theory behind that, I thought like, yeah, syntactic, semantic, pragmatic, that is everything that is like explaining all kinds of difficulties in games. But also the thematic or emotional difficulty uh, or challenge is something that uh, rises from, from the like the message or happenings in in the storyline or something that makes you feel uneasy or makes you feel bad uh, maybe even so bad that it's difficult for you to continue playing uh, kind of like mainstream example of that was when i was playing gta 4 
and I, I was hoping to play it in a way that I play like uh, ex criminal who tries to get rid of the, his past and and uh, end making like crimes and and uh, become a good person. But at some point the game forced me to commit a murder, and if I didn't do that, uh, it just like killed me and I had to try again until I committed the murder. It made me feel so bad because it was like contradicting my thoughts of, of the character and the story. So I couldn't continue playing that game anymore. And I, I uh, finished playing GTA 4 at that point. And I've never played another GTA game again. Another like not so mainstream example is of course uh, that dragon cancer uh, like indie art art game that deals about or tells a story about uh, parents whose uh, child is dying of cancer and uh, when i was playing that game uh, my own child was like less than a year old and for me seeing this like kind of these events happening around uh, like small kid in the game they were so emotionally kind of overwhelming that i i could only play like 15 minutes at the time and i had to take a like days long pause between the like play playing events because uh it, it got so close to me and it, i i got so emotional that i i i couldn't handle it anymore so this these are kind of like thematic or or kind of emotional maybe story-based difficulties that has uh, i have uh experienced in games on the other other hand it can also mean that uh maybe to co completely understand what the game means uh, you need to kind of uh, go through all the like story bits and pieces in the game and, and also accept the story uh, as it is. But if you don't really kind of understand the themes that the game are game is handling or what, what the story is telling you about, uh, it's kind of you don't get the game. Uh, you don't understand the story, and uh, in a way, you you feel like you you are kind of puzzled. You get confused, or, or when the game ends, you are like, "What was this about?" And um, well, a uh, few years ago, I, I I was working in a company called Mindfield Games, where we may, were making an adventure game called Pollen, and uh, it was a first-person adventure about like uh, the main character, the player going into a space station that where everyone has disappeared and you try to understand what has happened to other people. And uh, well, uh, people played the game and uh, they managed to get to the end of the game uh, to see the end credits and they didn't really understand the storyline because we didn't want to make it like obvious we wanted to make it kind of implicit maybe like thought provoking in a way that uh, the players if they really want to understand what we wanted to say uh, they have to like really think about the game and and all the things that we present the uh, player in the game but there were only few players as far as i know that uh, really wanted to understand the game but uh, those players really loved playing that game and and they got back to the game after like uh, finishing it and uh, played again and again spent like 10 15 20 hours playing the game that can be like completed in 25 minutes uh, but for those the game slowly opened all these like secrets and and they they got our message but, but uh, most of the gamers they went like oh these guys like spent like half, i don't know million euros and two and a half years to make this like crappy <laughs> like adventure they are stupid they didn't really get what we wanted to say so that game definitely had this kind of uh, overall implicit puzzling storyline and it was like really difficult to understand and you have to work 
uh, and play the game to understand what we wanted to say. So these are kind of things that I, I mean with like thematic uh, or story based or emotional kind of uh, challenges or difficulties. Oh yeah, complex topics. Thank you for that. And but there's still one more question in the chat, and we have seven minutes to go, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, the other question, let's say I want my player to use what they learned in my game to think outside the box. Uh, how can I best hint my player to do so? It feels like it's a fine line between giving too much away and not giving enough hints. Yeah. That, that, question, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a kind of like difficult thing about like thinking outside the box. Uh, quite often, uh, in, in at least in, in mainstream games, the games are built in a way that they are kind of self-sufficient, that they hold all the information that player needs to kind of uh, complete the game or, or uh, solve the puzzles or, or whatever. Uh, and also, often games also like give the player the instructions. Like in this game, from the very beginning, we got instructions on how to work these like puzzles and and how to like uh, progress in the game. But sometimes, uh, uh, and I I think the kind of but the difficult thing here is is that if you want to make the player to think outside the box, kind of come up with their own ideas. Uh, you probably don't want to first teach them everything by holding their hand, because then they get kind of, they think that the, this game's uh, language is such that they teach you everything beforehand, and then you just like apply everything the game has, has been teaching you. Uh, to progress in the game. But in that kind of mindset, if the player is uh, asked to do something that the game hasn't already like uh, taught the player, players get confused uh, and they are like, I I'm stuck, I, I don't understand this. Uh, so they, they may think that the, it, the design is not really good uh, because the, the game suddenly speaks in kind of another language uh, or a, another dialect in a way that you are you are uh, doing something that you haven't like been asking from the players before. So I really don't know. It it really depends on on what kind of a game, what kinds of puzzles there are, like how to do this, like balancing act between like explaining the player certain things but not explaining too much uh, of course we don't want to make our puzzles feeling impossible too hard and we don't m want to make them trivial uh, in a way that yeah puzzles are such that you just like press buttons and and everything is clear uh, and you just like uh, pass everything in, in the first try. Uh, if you want to make the players to like constantly think uh, outside of the box, uh, maybe you need to like teach them to do that uh, from the very beginning of the game or, or or beforehand. Maybe you can use this kind of like uh, four-faced. Uh, game or level design philosophy that uh, Nintendo is using quite a lot that first they they show you you like challenge uh, which is like you can easily overcome and understand like the basic challenge like jumping uh, over a pit then they like make it more difficult that they have like uh, several bits one after another so you learn to like jump over over those uh, in a way that you get better and better in in the action but suddenly they they use this kind of twist in a level that uh, when you are jumping uh over pits some someone is shooting huge bullets uh, at you so you have to time your jumps 
such that uh, you'd also jump over the bullets. So kind of teach something easily, easier in the beginning and, and make the players like uh, practice that. Uh, and afterwards make it like twist in the, in the game and, and ask them to do something that they already know, but with something more. Maybe that could help help in, in, in that case. I don't know. But yeah, it, it, maybe that that question requires a bit more like thinking and discussion. Yeah, and probably more context, like actually knowing what what the game yeah, is and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Uh, somebody here on the chat is asking for like recommendations on books or resources to learn more about puzzle design. Maybe we can add some on the server afterwards, right? Yeah. If, if, we There's some. also like uh, something like I, I think like this is like basic book where to start. For example, the greatest puzzles of all time by Matthew Costello, uh, the guy who wrote some story or made the game design for Doom, but also made the seven quest and uh, 11th hour and something like that so like really famous uh, puzzle game designer um, there's a more theory based uh, book about like the puzzle instinct uh, let's see if I have something else well there are some books about like puzzle design and of course like the very classical puzzles like uh, crosswords and and uh, sudokus and everything uh, they they already have a lot of these elements that we can use in in uh, digital games for example this puzzle that I have here this has a like this is like kind of adaptation of quite old uh, logic puzzle where when you whenever you step on a plate you activate and deactivate uh, like teleports uh, around that plate and then you just have to like try to find a way through this uh, room in a way that uh, you don't get stuck in a corner. I got stuck and I have to try again. So, well, basically, I understand the logic of this. This is also a good example of this, like, lock key action. Thing. I understand the lo logic of this puzzle, but, like, doing uh, the things that are required to uh, open the door, that's the, like, action part of this puzzle and it requires quite a lot of like thinking and trying and and uh, retrying and and so on so uh, kind of solving this key uh, this understanding of how this work or, or using the key into this lock requires a lot of work now i again failed i i know how to do this but i can't remember it takes something like 20 steps that you have to do in correct order <laughs> but yeah uh, maybe we can find a like list of literature uh, about uh, puzzle design and puzzles and and uh, theory about puzzles and uh, add it uh, somewhere for you yeah that would be cool if if we have time but yeah let's see yeah uh, we are one minute over time. There's one more question that I can see. Do you want to answer that? Or... Yeah. Yeah. Ask okay. me. Uh, yeah. Um, when testing a puzzle game and the player struggles at the puzzle, how do you decide when to reach, uh, reach in uh, to move the test forward? Uh, it's kind of... Of course, this gets back to the, the uh, kind of syntactic, semantic, pragmatic uh, thing. If the player just don't have the abilities or, or is too slow, can't see well enough or, or is not strong enough or whatever it is, what is the reason why the pragmatic reason uh, why why the player can't solve the puzzle? Of course, that's, that's the thing that uh, you can like help the player forward, but uh, but then you also have like uh, change your puzzle in a way that the players actually can uh, solve the puzzle. If the player doesn't understand the rules, 
and kind of the syntax of the puzzle is too complex. Somehow the player is totally like just don't get the logic of the puzzle. Then there is something wrong in the puzzle. You can help the player uh, to get get past the uh, puzzle uh, at that point. But then you also have to like return to your puzzle uh, and kind of adjust it in a way that it's probably more easier for players to understand. Of course, if there's only just like one player who can't do that among like 25 of the test players, then you don't have to do, like do much about the puzzle. But on the semantic level, if the player understands how the uh, puzzle works and he's able to perform all these like uh, things required, but somehow the puzzle kind of emergent qualities of the puzzle are too complex for, for the player. I don't know. If the player gets like really frustrated, maybe you can give a hint like how to like perform, how to get through that. And then you maybe also want to like uh, reconsider uh, the structure of your puzzle or how it wor works or what you like, trying to give hints uh, beforehand for the players. But this is also like balancing at act. If you give too many hints beforehand, then the, like other players feel that you, the puzzles are trivial. If you don't give hints, then the puzzles may become like impossible for certain certain people, or maybe kind of too frustrating, and they stop playing. Uh, if you have ever been in, in escape rooms, the escape rooms, uh, the like administrator can give you hints if you get stuck, but you can also ask for hints. And if you can do that kind of thing in your game, that would be probably something really nice. So when players feel like they get stuck, they can ask for help and maybe they lose, uh, I don't know, achievement or you have a marking that they have used like one hint or something like that. If I can add an example. Of yeah. exactly this. Uh, there is a game which name I don't remember right now, but I can write it later. Uh, but uh, it's it's a basic um, game where you have a 2D picture, you have stuff going on in the picture, and you have to find items uh, according to the story. And in that game, um, after a few levels where it shows you the ropes and everything, the pictures get quite bigger. Uh, there's more items to find and there might be extra steps you have to do to find the items. So it is sort of also a puzzle in itself, finding one item. Um, and what they did is, after those few levels, they introduced um, a, uh, a button that you can press that gives you two minutes to... Um, oh, sorry, it picks an item. It gives you two minutes timer to find an item, and if you don't find it, it will show you where the item is. It is the completely optional thing, but it exists so that uh, for those who think that, okay, they've got enough of the level or they literally cannot find the thing, um, it will provide an answer. Yeah. Um, and I found that a really good thing, at least for that game specifically, because sometimes it did get very much, and unfortunately, uh, we found out that uh, a newer version of this game on console is also broken because we couldn't find one specific uh, cat that was supposed to be in there and apparently the cat was behind the tree, unclickable, and the level has been changed for whatever reason from previous versions, so it's just, you can't progress, but it is what it is. <laughs> that, that's a, another thing of a kind of like pragmatic uh, difficulty or challenge uh, if the game is broken it's not about you it's about the game not functioning as it should and that's that creates a like pragmatic challenge or at that point uh, in your story it created like pragmatic impossibility you can't play the game and uh yeah interesting but yeah that that was a good example and uh, i've seen that kind of mechanics also in quite many hidden ob object games where you try to find objects in, in uh, pictures. Uh, 
and that's a kind of nice way to like help people through the puzzles especially since the hidden object genre is quite casual and the players are not really hardcore gamers they would just want to like pass time and maybe have some slight challenges so helping them through the game is, is a like service to also for your own business because then they they stay hungry and they will buy more of those games okay uh we are already like eight minutes over time uh, thank you uh i hope uh you got something out of out of this uh gaming session and and my uh talk and uh have fun while playing and and designing games and puzzles right